Have you ever wondered who you truly are? It's a question many people ponder, but rarely find a satisfying answer. We often define ourselves by our jobs, relationships, or even our favorite hobbies. In this video, we will explore the question, who am I? We will seek wisdom to Buddha, how this one question can change your perspective, your confidence level, and consequentially, your whole life. So let's just start the video and you will automatically like in between. Chapter one, know thyself. Have you ever wondered, who am I? This simple question has puzzled philosophers, thinkers, and seekers for centuries. In the vast landscape of human thought and belief, Buddhism offers a unique perspective on the nature of the self, a perspective that challenges conventional wisdom and invites us to explore the depths of our own consciousness. In the eyes of Buddhism, you are not merely your physical body. While many religions and philosophies acknowledge the importance of the body, Buddhism goes a step further, suggesting that you are not an immortal soul either. It presents a radical idea. You are not your consciousness, your feelings, your thoughts, or even some eternal essence. At first glance, this might seem like a negation of existence itself, but according to the Buddha, it's not accurate to say that you are nothing. Rather, you are something far more complex and elusive than a single fixed identity. Enter the doctrine of reincarnation. If you've ever contemplated the idea of life after death, you might assume that there's a core you that persists from one lifetime to the next, carrying with it the consequences of past actions. However, the Buddha challenged this notion. Despite preaching reincarnation as a fundamental aspect of existence, the Buddha insisted that there is no enduring self that reincarnates. This teaching, known as anatta or no self, may seem perplexing at first, but the Buddha claimed that understanding it is essential for achieving enlightenment, for breaking free from the cycle of suffering. To grasp the concept of no self, we must delve into the five aggregates, the building blocks of conscious experience. These aggregates, form, feeling, cognition, mental formations and consciousness, shape our perception of reality, much like the colors on a screen, create the illusion of a person in a video. When we examine our experience closely, we find that the sense of I emerges from the interplay of these aggregates. Yet, the Buddha argued, there is no permanent, unchanging self to be found within them. Instead, there is only a fleeting assemblage of phenomena, constantly in flux. This realization challenges our deeply ingrained belief in a fixed and enduring self. It invites us to question who we truly are and to recognize the fluid and impermanent nature of our existence. But why does this matter? Why should we care about dismantling our notion of self? According to the Buddha, clinging to the illusion of self is the root cause of suffering. It leads us to grasp at transient phenomena, to identify with fleeting experiences, and to seek fulfillment in the external world. Yet, the Buddha offers a path to liberation a path that begins with understanding the true nature of the self. By recognizing the emptiness of the self, we can transcend suffering and find profound peace. So, as we embark on this exploration of the self, let us approach it with open minds and hearts. Let us delve into the depths of our consciousness and discover what lies beyond the illusion of self. And perhaps, in doing so, we may find liberation from suffering and awaken to the truth of our existence. Chapter two, define thyself. The quest to understand the nature of the self is a journey of introspection and inquiry, a journey that takes us deep into the recesses of our own consciousness. Just as the Buddha embarked on a path of inner exploration, 
so too can we cultivate the qualities of mindfulness, awareness, and insight to illuminate the mysteries of our existence. For the Buddha, this journey began with a period of rigorous asceticism and intense mental training. He pushed his body to the brink, sustaining himself on a single grain of rice per day and engaging in austere practices under the guidance of various meditation teachers. Yet, despite his efforts, he found himself unfulfilled, still searching for the elusive end of suffering. It was only when the Buddha turned inward directing his attention to the workings of his own mind, that he made a groundbreaking discovery. Through years of meticulous observation and profound insight, he discerned that what he had previously regarded as his self was nothing more than a composite of five aggregates, the five components of conscious experience. These aggregates, form, feeling, cognition, mental formations, and consciousness, constitute the raw material of our subjective reality. Like the pixels on a screen, they come together to create the illusion of a cohesive self. But upon closer inspection, they reveal themselves to be transient and insubstantial. Form encompasses everything physical and tangible, from the contours of our bodies to the textures of the world around us. Feeling encompasses the spectrum of sensations, from pleasure to pain that color our experience of the world. Cognition encompasses the realm of thoughts, memories, and perceptions that shape our understanding of reality. Mental formations encompass the myriad desires, emotions, and intentions that drive our actions and shape our lives. And consciousness is the very awareness that illuminates our existence, allowing us to perceive the world and ourselves. Yet, despite the complexity of these aggregates, the Buddha recognized that none of them could be identified as the self. None of them could lay claim to a permanent, unchanging essence that persists throughout our lives. Instead, they are impermanent and interdependent, arising and ceasing in response to conditions and causes beyond our control. This insight into the nature of the self, or rather, the absence thereof, lies at the heart of the Buddha's teachings. It is a teaching that challenges our deeply ingrained beliefs about who we are and invites us to question the fundamental nature of our existence. But the journey does not end there. Having gained insight into the nature of the self, the Buddha went on to explore the root cause of suffering and the path to liberation. In the chapters that follow, we will delve deeper into these teachings, exploring how they offer profound insights into the human condition and provide a roadmap for transcending suffering and attaining true peace and happiness. Just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please consider like and subscribe, and thanks a lot if you did already. Moving on. Chapter 3. Illusion of Self As we continue our exploration of the Buddha's teachings, we come face to face with one of the most profound and challenging concepts. The illusion of self. At the core of Buddhist philosophy lies the radical notion that our sense of self our I, our me, our identity, is nothing more than a mirage, a trick of the mind. To understand this concept, let us delve deeper into the analogy of the video screen. Just as the images on a screen, whether of Marilyn Monroe or a scenic landscape, appear vivid and real, so too does our sense of self seem concrete and immutable. We feel like distinct individuals, separate and autonomous, with a permanent core that defines who we are. But upon closer examination, we begin to see through the illusion. Just as the images on the screen are composed of pixels of light, our sense of self is composed of the five aggregates, form, feeling, cognition, mental formations, and consciousness. These aggregates combine and interact 
to create the illusion of a unified self. But in reality, they are impermanent and interdependent, constantly changing and shifting in response to external conditions. The Buddha likened our attachment to the self to grasping at a handful of sand. No matter how tightly we clench our fist, the sand inevitably slips through our fingers. Similarly, no matter how strongly we cling to our sense of self, it ultimately proves elusive and ephemeral. This realization can be unsettling, even frightening. Our sense of self is deeply ingrained and fundamental to our experience of the world. To question its existence is to confront the very core of our identity. But the Buddha encourages us to embrace this discomfort, for it is only by transcending our attachment to the self that we can find true liberation from suffering. In the words of the Buddha, there is no self to be found anywhere. When we let go of our attachment to the illusion of self, we open ourselves up to a deeper understanding of reality. We see that we are not separate from the world around us, but rather interconnected with all beings and phenomena. We realize that our sense of self is just one small part of a vast and ever-changing tapestry of existence. This realization is both humbling and liberating. It frees us from the endless cycle of craving and aversion, desire and fear that perpetuates our suffering. It allows us to experience life with greater clarity, compassion and equanimity. And ultimately, it leads us on the path to true peace and happiness. In the chapters that follow, we will explore how the Buddha's teachings offer practical guidance for unraveling the illusion of self and finding lasting fulfillment and contentment in our lives. We will discover how mindfulness, meditation, and ethical living can help us cultivate wisdom and compassion and awaken to the true nature of reality. Chapter 4. Embracing Impermanence In the vast tapestry of existence, one thread binds all. Impermanence. This fundamental truth, woven into the fabric of life, is central to the teachings of Buddhism. It is the recognition that everything in this world is transient, fleeting, and ever-changing. Imagine a flowing river, ceaselessly moving, never stagnant. Each droplet of water dances along the current, never lingering, always in motion. Such is the nature of existence, constantly in flux, forever evolving. The Buddha, with profound insight, illuminated the path to liberation by urging us to confront this reality head on. He taught that attachment to the ephemeral leads to suffering. We cling desperately to what we perceive as solid and enduring, only to be confronted with the harsh truth of impermanence. Consider the blossoming of a flower, a moment of exquisite beauty. But even as it unfurls its petals in a radiant display, it is already beginning to fade, wilting and withering with each passing moment. The flower is a poignant reminder of the impermanence that permeates all aspects of life. Yet, it is in embracing impermanence that we find liberation by relinquishing our attachment to the fleeting and embracing the ever-changing nature of existence, we free ourselves from the shackles of suffering. We learn to flow with the currents of life, embracing each moment as it arises and letting go when the time comes. The teachings of Buddhism offer a profound wisdom. To cling to the transient is to invite sorrow but to embrace impermanence is to find peace. Through mindfulness and awareness, we cultivate a deep understanding of the impermanent nature of all things. In the dance of existence, let us find solace in the rhythm of impermanence. Let us cherish each moment, knowing that it is but a fleeting glimpse into the infinite tapestry of life. And in doing so, May we discover the boundless freedom that comes from letting go. 
Chapter 5 Cultivating Compassion At the heart of Buddhism lies a profound truth, the interconnectedness of all beings. In this intricate web of existence, every action, every thought, every emotion ripples outward, touching the lives of others in ways both seen and unseen. It is within this vast interdependence that the seed of compassion is planted. Compassion is more than mere sympathy or pity. It is the deep recognition of the suffering inherent in all beings, coupled with the earnest desire to alleviate it. It is the gentle hand extended to lift another from the depths of despair. The soothing voice that whispers words of solace in times of anguish. The Buddha, in his infinite wisdom, taught that compassion is the key to liberation. By opening our hearts to the suffering of others, we transcend the narrow confines of self-interest and ego. We come to realize that our well-being is inseparable from the well-being of others and that true happiness can only be found in the happiness of all beings. Imagine a world where every heart beats with compassion, where every hand reaches out in kindness, where every voice speaks words of love and understanding. It is a world transformed, a world illuminated by the radiant light of compassion. But cultivating compassion is not always easy. It requires courage to confront the suffering of others, to bear witness to their pain without turning away. It requires patience to listen deeply, to truly understand the experiences of others. And it requires humility to recognize our own limitations, to acknowledge that we too are in need of compassion. Yet, in the face of these challenges, the rewards of compassion are immeasurable. It softens the hardened edges of our hearts, melting away the barriers that separate us from one another. It brings healing and reconciliation, fostering harmony and peace in our relationships and communities. So, let us walk the path of compassion, hand in hand, guided by the light of wisdom and love. Let us sow the seeds of kindness wherever we go, knowing that even the smallest act of compassion has the power to transform the world. And may we, in our own small way, be beacons of light in a world that so desperately needs it. This is the end of this video. We believe you enjoyed it. Now pause and comment down your thoughts as we really want to hear from you. It gives us motivation. After done commenting, watch my next video appearing right of your screen that we think best for you. Peace.